Hello everyone, my name is Tony Chen and I'm from the Biomimetics and Dexterous Manipulation Lab at Stanford University with Professor Mark Kokoski. And I'm here today presenting our work, Aerial Grasp. We present an approach in which a simple dynamic model of a quad rotor target interaction leads to the design of a gripper and associated velocity sufficiency region. A velocity sufficiency region is an area in the velocity space that highlights the velocity conditions with high probability of grasp success. The resulting gripper weighs 23 grams and closes within 12 milliseconds of an impact. With this gripper, we demonstrate in flight experiments that a 550 gram drone can capture an 85 gram target at various relative velocity between 1 meter per second and 2.7 meters per second. So now let me show you why we have done this and how we did it. Aerial robots such as quad rotors provide unparalleled versatility as a platform. However, quad rotors' interaction with their physical environment is still limited. In the case of aerial grasping, the grasping drone must be capable of compensating for significant linear and angular disturbance. Establishing the flight conditions that maximize the likelihood of a successful aerial grasp which is essential to informing drone control strategies. So to start with quad rotor dynamics, we use a common dynamic model where external torque and external force applied through the drone are related through geometry. For the drone to remain stable after the initial collision, it must recover from the external wrench applied by the collision. This is generated by a feedback policy on the drone state. As a simple best case approximation, we can assume they are related to the maximum rotor speed. The change in momentum of the drone caused by this interaction, approximating the control collision as an impulse, becomes the change in linear momentum and angular momentum. So what does this mean to the gripper mechanics? The implication of these are that one should reduce Fe as much as practically possible while also keeping the interval brief. Considering the gripper and suspension, the formal goal can be accomplished by introducing compliance and friction to dissipate energy while there is still relative motion between the gripper and its target. The, the latter goal motivates a fast-acting gripper, which reduces the chance that the target will bounce out of the grasp. At the same time, general objectives for the gripper systems include the overall weight and inertia should be minimized the maximum allowable difference in initial relative velocity between the gripper and the target should be as large as possible, and the combination of gripper and target should impose payload torque as small as possible after target acquisition is complete. So given these aforementioned objectives, we developed a passively triggered gripper mounted on a compliant suspension. The gripper and suspension weighs 22.7 grams, and complete a grasp within 12 milliseconds upon impact. The use of a passive triggering mechanism eliminates the need for sensors to detect and respond to contact and allows the gripper to use stored potential energy for fast closure. It also avoids the weight and complexity of a system with sensors, actuators, and electronics. So now let me walk through what happens during the aerial grasping sequence. As soon as the impact occurs, the linear compliance mechanism, shown as the orange section and the white section, starts to compress, causing the blue trigger tendon to pull the yellow trigger upward, releasing the red block, thus releasing the stored potential energy in the rubber band. The stored potential energy is used to move the red block forward, thus pulling the green tendon to close the under actuary finger here, showing pink and black. The claw is connected to the rest of the gripper through the blue self-centering ball joint by utilizing the torsional spring stiffness of a compression spring. Gripper mechanism compliance is one effective way of reducing the load on the drone during the collision. Additionally, including compliance increases the collision duration. So as observed in nature, where the falcon swings slide backwards upon catching the prey, the gripper presented also has the capability of passively swinging downwards after a successful grasp attempt. This serves two functions. 
The first is to reduce the relative velocity between the grasping drone and the target at the point of impact. The second is to move the center of gravity of the captured target to a more favorable position. This feature is demonstrated here but not used in the final flight experiments. With the simplified dynamics model and the trigger mechanics, we can start to validate the design and to relate to and explore the sufficiency regions. The first step is to establish the forces needed to trigger the grasping sequence. The gripper is mounted on a 6-axis force and torque sensor. Then a random force is applied to the center of the gripper. Empirically, with many trials, a limit surface can be plotted in force space. So this is the start of the force sufficiency region, a surface in the XYZ force space that corresponds to the minimum force combinations required to trigger the grasping sequence. Any vector that is below the surface in the Z direction will not trigger a grasp, such as the red vector shown in the video. So from here on out, we need a way to translate this limit surface from force space to velocity space. We have built a pneumatic launch rail powered by a pneumatic piston. An instrumented dummy gripper with a capacitive 6-axis force torque sensor is used to record the force. So first, we do this many times to establish a relationship between pressure used in the launch system and the exit velocity of the main drone. And then we can correspond this velocity to the peak force measured by the sensor to form the relationship between relative velocity and the force experienced at the tip of the gripper. With these experiments and gripper characteristics, it is time to evaluate the gripper against design requirements. It either does not meet the design specs and requires a redesign process, or good enough to proceed to be used in flat testing. Combining the modeling and experimental setup, we can construct a sufficiency region for the gripper in force and then in velocity space. So let me redefine a velocity sufficiency region. In this paper's context, it is a combination of relative velocity conditions between the grasping drone and the target drone at the point of impact yields the highest probability for a successful grasping attempt. So let's break this down and first take a look at the yz direction. The lower bound of this sufficiency region is set by the minimum force needed to trigger using the data acquired during the ATI testing. The sides are bounded by the maximum rotational compliance for the yaw direction and pitch direction of the drone. The upper bound is constrained by the maximum controllable impact force in the pitch direction, region 3, and the maximum allowable force in the yaw direction of the drone, which is region 4. So the computed sufficiency region 1 encloses the range of relative velocity at initial contact for which a catch should be possible. To note here that this bounded region is not absolute, but rather a gradient. As the drone's relative velocity gets closer to the boundary of this region, the probability of success decreases. So this same process can be also applied to the zx direction. So now with this information, instead of a specific collision point and specific impact velocity, we can feed a range of possible relative velocity into the grasping drone's controller to compute for the flight trajectory for error grasping. To demonstrate the function of the drone and the gripper system, flight tests were performed in a room equipped with a motion capture system. In conclusion, as drones are controlled with position and velocity commands as input, a grasping sufficiency region in velocity space is valuable for planning a collision. Because of the nature of error grasping, the exact point of collision is unknown. The response time can be minimized through the use of a passive mechanism that triggers mechanically. As this is an initial exploration of error grasping, 
Many areas such as vision tracking and more complex pursuit trajectory warrant further investigation.